the great day at 9A. I'm Nicole Nalepa. Scott Haney here. Nice to be with Nicole Nalepa this morning. Nice to be with Scott Haney this morning. How are you? I'm, I'm really well. Looking pretty in maroon. Thank you very much. And I love your tie, by oh, the way. Oh, thank you. Well, Nicole gave me this tie. It's got to be two or three years ago already. No longer than that. Isn't it? Longer than. I think than... four or five years ago now. Longer than there have been ties up in my closet. <laughs> yes, yeah, my Mets. And it's official. It says MLB right on the mm -hmm. back of it. So uh, if you like. And I got a lot of compliments on my tie this on today. So I'm very That's happy. Sure. I Yeah, I don't wear it that often because it's one of those things that people, I think, will remember. But it yeah. matches the set very nice. And it go does. Mets. I did watch the Mets lose the other day. But anyway, <laughs> what, what's going don't on? Don't let Eric Parker hear you I know. That. It's just terrible. <laughs> anyway, so how are you? Well, I'm doing well, thanks. Um, it, it, the weather, is it going to be Smoky. okay today? Yeah, it, you know, it was so hazy in our eye cams and stuff. And yeah. I was talking to my mom on the phone up in the Berkshires, and she said it is so hard to breathe oh, up yeah. there. The air, she said it's crazy. I know it sounds wild, but... All, all I need is the air to breathe, just to love you. <laughs> there you go. There you Good go. One. All right, what's going on? All right, well, with just two days left in this year's legislative oh, session, we are one step closer to having a new two-year state budget. The House passed the proposal at 1.41 a.m., so just before 2 this morning. Senators are expected to vote on this tonight, and lawmakers say that it's a bipartisan compromise that includes a lot of good things. This is a historic budget. I mean, we have, I think this is the second largest tax cut in history. It's got the largest personal income tax rate in, in history. Um, you know, over the biennium, I think it's, you know, about, about 800 million in tax cuts. We're turning hundreds of dollars to, you know, retirees, families, workers, businesses. I think it's not even a matter of convincing. You know, I have two of my ranking members of finance and appropriations. that They were the authors of a lot of the stuff that's in this budget. So. It really was a matter of explaining what was in the budget uh, as opposed to convincing. All right, well, here are, the, here are the biggest takeaways. The budget is a $51 billion proposal for the next two years. It includes income tax cuts for low- and middle-income families. It also invests $240 million in public education. That's money that's expected to go towards hiring and retaining teachers during a mass shortage. So it's just like, what, two and a half hours before lawmakers are back on Capitol Hill? They took a little yeah. rest because they were there so late last night, but uh, they'll be back at it at 11.30 this morning. Yeah, because they have until midnight Wednesday. That's it to finish this. It's so. like deadlock. I know. I, it always happens. Well, I, like I work well works. under pressure, so maybe they do, there too. There we go. We're in this business, and we work with deadlines, so maybe they like their business, too. Exactly. I remember deadlines. writing my paper in Switzerland in the third grade. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. I was in the third grade, and I was on the kitchen floor with my mother. She's like, we'll never let this happen again. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then it happened again. <laughs> Wait, is that real? <laughs> That's a real story. Oh, my gosh. Did you say 3 a.m. in Switzerland? No, 3 a.m., but I was doing a report oh, on, on Switzerland. Switzerland. And yeah. then I thought you said you were in Switzerland. No. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what is <laughs> 3 a.m. on the kitchen floor in Long Island doing a report on Switzerland. Gotcha. It was terrible. <laughs> well, that's a good story. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Secretary of the State Stephanie Thomas was also hoping for some more funding for early voting, which goes into effect next year. And we have our chief political reporter, Susan Rath. Uh, she'll have all the latest on the budget and the other last-minute bills on Channel 3 Eyewitness News today. So yesterday I'm on 84 mm -hmm. by exit 50 in downtown Hartford. Three cars past me doing about a hundred weaving in and out of traffic and I literally was scared for my life they're terrorizing so this is them. an interesting story 11 people have been arrested after a massive ATV roundup in Hartford police say they also impounded 11 dirt bikes and ATVs as part of the sweep riders have been terrorizing people on streets and communities I, I know I know what you're talking about across our state one of the suspects was caught on a stolen dirt bike another was brought in on gun charges investigators have also found a fugitive wanted for robbery during during the operation. Yikes. We're going to have more information about the arrest and we're going to continue to follow this as uh, the cut, the track, the um, cut, what am I trying to say? Efforts there? to cut down on yeah, the Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, we're going to have that all on the Channel 3 app, so that's coming up ahead. The crackdown, that's what I was the trying crackdown. to say. Crackdown, oh yeah, crackdown. it's a crackdown for sure. All right, some neighbors in Waterbury are furious this morning after some badly damaged, uh, there was a local park that everybody goes to and it was badly damaged. They were doing donuts in the park. Yep, it's a place where kids play every day, like you said, and especially this time of year, right? Well, Drone 3 shows you Look the tire this. marks. How, what, what, are you, what are you doing? I know, this is a Waterville park. We have reached out to Waterbury Police to see See if they are investigating this. We have yet to hear back. We'll continue to keep calling and get you some more answers. I, I just don't I mean, understand. Come I don't on, people. Come on, people. Just 
Just chill out. Just chill, Maybe everybody take chill. take a dunk in the Long Island Sound. Exactly. How's the temperature today? <laughs> 59 there. <laughs> Let's take a look at our Doppler. Hey, we got a thunderstorm just to the east, uh, west of Connecticut. You oh. see that? See all those little lightning flashes right by Stony Point and Buchanan in New York, right Is that by like Austin? Little pop up? Little pop up. Okay. These are going to be popping up like popcorn throughout the day today. So if you hear thunder, sea, lightning, please make sure you head indoors. We're also dealing with some scattered showers down through southwest Connecticut, Fairfield County, even a portion of New Haven County. I've pinpointed the Doppler there so you can see the action that is taking place. All right, now according to Futurecast, tomorrow's weather today. Yep, more scattered showers popping up throughout the day today. It's not going to be raining in every town, but there will be a hazy smoke to the atmosphere. That's because there's an air quality alert in effect due to the fires that are burning in Quebec. They're making their way all the way down into Connecticut. Tonight will dry things out. Tomorrow looks like a basically dry day, but it will be a little bit cooler. So for the rest of today, temperatures topping out in the low to mid 70s. Notice the thunderstorm icons from time to time, 3 p.m. And then tonight, as we lose the daytime heating, the thunderstorm threat will go away and tomorrow looks a little bit better but a little bit cooler and I'll have your full three-day forecast coming up a little bit later on in the show all right sounds good all right I love this story about the iPhone feature oh yeah what is it well it's something that users can take advantage of um, it's a new safety feature and it's all thanks to the latest version of the Apple operating system what is it iOS 17 now uh, well there's that yeah and th when you download this it's called the check-in oh so, cool yeah so it allows family or friends to see a loved one has arrived safely at a destination so I love people, this. when you download the new iOS 17, very good, Scott. I'm very impressed that you threw that out. You didn't know how to use your iPhone. Good job. I'm on eight. <laughs> yes, you are. Well, with this new feature, people can actually activate the check-in when they leave. And when the iPhone arrives at the designated spot, the phone actually automatically sends a notification. So Apple says it could help if someone's going for an early morning run, walking home from a party or yeah, a friend's house. Great. If the person does not arrive at the destination, the phone will automatically send information like location and the phone's battery status. You know, um, the old-fashioned ring once when you get home. Yep, did you ever yep, do that? Yep, right, yep. That's what we did with my grandparents. My mom did it uh, with her grandparents. And now, you know, we don't even have to call. We can right, maybe just do this. follow it on your flip phone. Exactly. <laughs> Well, well, maybe I don't not think your flip phone. I don't think iOS is for the flip phone, but... That's too bad. I love a good flip phone. <laughs> I want to be like Adele. Hello? <laughs> All right, uh, this would make me feel... So, uh, this would make me feel totally yeah. safer. I don't think it's an issue of Big Brother, Absolutely. but and I would and totally use it if I got it. For parents? Oh, my oh gosh. Oh, my gosh. Game changer. Oh, George and Emmy... I hope they know that I'm going to be using this feature when they oh, go to Oh, do parties. I? Wait a minute. Is that a helicopter parent I see? <laughs> Hover. <laughs> Maybe they don't have to know that I'll do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> guilty. All right, Prince Harry is back in Britain for his high-profile lawsuit. Yeah, he was not there yesterday and the judge was not happy. He's testifying <laughs> in London's High Court. The Duke, the Duke of Sussex is part of a group suing British tabloids, which I think is awesome. Harry wasn't there yesterday and the judge wasn't happy about it, as I just mentioned, but he did show up today. Prince Harry and dozens of other public figures claimed the Mirror Group newspapers hacked their phones and got other private information illegally. Oh, that's just awful if that is it, the case. It, Oh, and, 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 if you, and if you read Spare? Yeah, it's, he talked about a lot he of He talked that. a lot about this. So um, he's the first senior royal to testify in court in more than 100 years. Good for him, though. And, his pa and the, the, the monarch was not happy about it. You know, they're just like, no, just let the press keep doing what they're doing. And if, if, you, if you want an interesting read, mm -hmm. read the book Spare. It, it, it highlights all of this stuff. It's great information. It's a game between it, the oh, press and the monarch. Absolutely. It's very interesting. And those the guys, things, yeah. they, they don't get their money unless they find something. And they're ruthless. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're